Yeah. And unfortunately dropping back to even with the card. Moving down the leaderboard, Luke, never a good thing. Just let that shot be water off a duck's back. Well, that's a chance still to get up and down if they can hold a monster. Now let's switch our focus to Colin Morikawa. He's trying to pull ahead in this group rivalry. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can make this big putt for birdie. If this putt drops, they'll pull in front of Colin Morikawa. Let's see if they can start applying some pressure. Come on, ball. Come on. Always good to lead the bounce back category. That's a good stat. And with it, he moves to one under par. Oh, that was a touch of class. Wouldn't mind seeing that again. What an amazing putt from way out. Some lovely momentum for this player, moving up the leaderboard. The tee shot at the par 4-6 has changed a lot now that that tree's been taken out of the way, Rich. But uh, what do you think of this short par 4? I missed the tree. I thought that was a really cool feature of this hole. You had to flight it underneath the tree back in the day to find the fairway. The bunker down the left-hand side has been expanded quite a bit as the lake on the left-hand side has been added as well. The front part of this green is protected by tall palm trees that will certainly make you think on your second shots. This is a wonderful little par four. Big putt for par coming up. Nice little putt to hole, that one. Now three strokes back after that hole. As we go from a wonderful little par four, we go to a challenging longer par four, the seven. And as you can see, there's a long fairway bunker down the left-hand side that makes you believe there's more room left than you actually have. It's just not there. Players should be looking a little bit further right. If you find the fairway, your second shot should be straightforward. In fact, Luke, I made a two here one time, so that shows you how simple this hole can be. Now over to Colin Morikawa. He's got some work to do, but he's only one back from his rival. Getting ready to play their third. Just three strokes back. And he's down there. You got a read? Straight back up this hill. Can be firm here. Oh, you like me and thought that had a chance. And unfortunately heading in the wrong direction on the leaderboard after that hole. The eighth hole, a long par three stretching 240 yards at its maximum. It's no sleeper, that's for sure. I don't find anything sleepy about this hole. The front of this green is so narrow. There's no place to land it, especially when they put the flagstick there. This hole will grab your attention as it should because it's a long iron to a sliver of an opening, even when they put the pin on the right-hand side, you want no part of it. The center of the green all day long here. And a par putt awaits him. And down she goes. Now let's switch our focus to Colin Morikawa. It's been neck and neck. He's actually tied with his rival. This is tough. Can he do it? So after that effort, this is what the leaderboard looks like. So no movement, movement there. The player remains at even par. The final hole on the opening nine at TPC Sawgrass' stadium course, Rich, is a clever three-shotter. Par five, 583 yards from the back. Most players will play this as a three-shotter. Just find the fairway out to the left. Second shot out to the right. Sets up a very simple third shot to a very narrow green. Miss it right or left. Good luck getting it up and down. Few players in the history of the game have had a bigger impact so early in their career than Colin Morikara, Rich. Uh, some comparisons go as close to Tiger Woods. As they should be currently right now with what he has done in the game so far in his young career. He's come out 
each and every week and put pressure on every single player because of his ball striking and because they know that there's no weaknesses in his game other than sometimes the putter but when you hit it as good as he does you're bound to make a putt now and again and each and every week when he shows up players on the driving range are looking at him going okay he's here i gotta have my a game certainly feels like sky's the limit for colin morikawa two major championships under his belt right now surely more in his future no point hanging on to that one you didn't hit your best there yep solid connection this is looking good that's nicely done important part here they make it they're into the top five well yeah, it's a bit disappointing the putt drops and we're moving on the leader now has a one-stroke advantage there's some birdie holes out on this course and the 11th is certainly one of those but uh, there are some troublesome spots if you get out of play there definitely is trouble but the thing i love about this hole the most luke is that there's so many different ways to play it most players will take driver off the tee but from there now it's anybody's ball game you don't have to go for the green on the second shot you can lay it up over the left you can lay it up over to the right you can lay it up long left there's so many different ways of attacking this hole each individual is going to do it differently i love the second shot on this hole now over to colin morikawa he's trying to pull ahead in this group rivalry let's see what happens let's take a look at the leaderboard Ooh, that almost went down trailing by a few shots after that hole well the tee shot is all that matters on the short par 4 12th most players can reach the green it's just the decision whether the player goes for it or not they can but they better be aware that there's a lot of danger up there water left obviously is no good but even bailing out to the right in those dunes in the mounds the little pot bunkers on top of those mounds well forget about it that's not a good space either especially since the green does run pretty hard from right to left if you want to take this hole on with driver and expecting to make three well you need to realize that a five and a six could be easily made as well putting for birdie They'll be disappointed with that one. That was a pushed putt. Good putters will make these. Right on five feet. Ooh. That was pretty straightforward. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. Well, as you start to head for home here at TPC Sawgrass, you're blessed with this wonderful par 3 13. And this is a really cool par 3. You've got three distinct areas on the green, front right, all the way on the left-hand side, and the back right. Wherever they put the pin is going to dictate what shot shape you want to have into that green. I think it's a really cool design because it requires you to think about how you want the golf ball to land on the green and the way you want it to bounce. I think Pete Dye did a great job in designing this green. So after that hole, he's now up to even with the car. There's a few birdie opportunities out of the gate here on the second nine at TPC Sawgrass, but it really starts to toughen up down the stretch, starting here with a difficult par 4 14. Difficult tee shot on this plank, some 481 yards from the tip. You find the fairway, and you've got a decent chance of finding the green with your second shot, but if you're out of position anywhere on this hole, your number will go up exponentially. That's a bit out of shape. And here we are with the third shot. Four strokes off the lead. Henny, you've had the chance to have a look over this one. Just got to use the touch of a feather. Barely has to blow on it. This is just downhill. It looks like he pushed that one. Looks like a pretty straightforward five-footer to me. That limits the damage. Now let's switch our focus to Colin Morikawa. He's one stroke behind his rival in this event. Going with the six iron here. Well, that's got to have some impact on the scoreboard. Let's take a look. The leader now has a one-stroke advantage. 
the par 4, 15th. Again, requires another strong tee shot because there's some trees in the way, Rich. Players do hit through a shoot off this tee shot, which makes it a little bit simpler, I believe, for the players. Bunker down the right-hand side is no good because you'll have trees blocking you out with your second shot. If you miss it left into the pine straw, now you've got some trees blocking you out there, so finding the fairway is imperative. This green is no fun. You find the center of the green, and you might be able to putt every single day, but in all reality, you have to find the correct section in order to give yourself the best look at making a putt. That's a disappointing stroke. That's a push. An opportunity to make a par here. And with that putt, one over, heading to the final few holes. So no change on the leaderboard for this player after that hole. As we head to the 16th tee, the famous par five reached the start of the gauntlet. Ideally, players want to take their tee shots from right to left, start off that fairway bunker and move it left back in the fairway. Anything down the left-hand side can get caught up into those trees and really cause players issues with their layup. You find the fairway, now you have a massive decision to make. Go for it or bail out to the left thinking that's the safe play. It really is not. You have to be brave and try and find this green with your second shot. If not, it could come up and bite you. A spot in the top five on the line here. Eleven feet left to the hole. This is what they have left for birdie here. Go on, get in the hole. And that's their fourth birdie of the day. Trailing by four strokes. All right, Rich, you've stood there, you've hit the shot. Take us through the par 317. When you play here in a practice round, it looks like you could just throw it on there. But when you're in a tournament round, it doesn't even look like it exists. It, the hole changes so much when the tournament starts. That's what I love about it. You just add 35,000 people who are having some fun and ready to heckle you if you knock it in the water. Eh, good luck. Enjoy. Okay, let's get back to it, shall we? This one's for Birdie. Ouch, that hurts. And that should secure the par on this one. So, no movement on the leaderboard there, remaining at even overall. Let's head to the finishing hole, this wonderful par 4 18th. Wonderful only if you're a spectator. It's wonderful if you're not playing it for a lot of cash. It's just one of the most difficult, visually intimidating holes I think you'll ever face in your life. Somehow, try and hit it down the right-hand side of the fairway, keep it out of the rough, and from there, hit it out to the right-hand side of the green somehow, also keeping it out of the rough or that pot bunker short right. Listen, you'd be happy to make five here, that's for sure. Fours are magnificent. Threes are unicorns. They really don't happen that much. It is such a difficult, demanding finishing hole. Probably one of the toughest in championship golf. Didn't quite have the right stuff there. The putt drops, and this player is finished for the day. And wow, what a rivalry that was. Let's recap some of the results. Well done, Henny Koyak. Thanks for joining us on course today. Luke, thank you so much. I'm not sure anyone enjoyed watching these incredible rivalries out on the course more than me. A pleasure, as always, to tread the fairways. I'm Luke Elvey, alongside Rich Beam, and on behalf of all the hard-working folks at HB Studios, it's goodbye for now.